Welcome to Rickshaw Scale Modelling. This is part two, the final part of the Road to Victory World War II Diorama Scale 1 to 76. In part one, I um, built the stone wall uh, for the diorama using some clay and um, painted it to resemble the wall. In this part, I'm going to be uh, doing the landscaping around the wall and um, finishing up uh, with some trees and so forth to, to place on. Um, if you've watched uh, part one, you'll, you'll know this is going to be a series of dioramas for the 176 scale models that I've been building. So let's jump into this. So that's everything dry on the diorama now. But I've changed my mind. Obviously I will be painting the white strips out. But um, the path that I've broken, I'm going to take off. I decided that's too white, so I'm simply just going to move this to around here, move that to about there, and I put the two trucks on. That that'll look better. Um, these lanes were quite narrow, and these roads, so that was just too large, I think. So I shall. Do that. Not so much worried about the grey on this side. I'll, I'll cover that up before ledge and whatever. So I'll go and paint this. The first job is to paint over the white stripes and I'm using 78 tank grey for that so the same colour um, as the road itself. As I explained in the other video I'm, I'm pretty sure that the um, the white uh, divine marking for the road uh, were uh, in use back in the 1940s. So that's why I'm changing it. The same reason why I'm changing the width of the road as well. Um, looking at some photos, uh, these lanes were quite narrow. They weren't uh, big, uh, wide lanes for allowing two vehicles to pass. So I'm filling in the uh, brown uh, again with uh, the acrylic brown that I have. It's, um, you can get in most um, hobby shops and paint, paint stores. It's just a generic um, acrylic brown. As you can see, I'm stabbing the paint on, creating textures and, and layers. Th th this is important because you don't want it to be a flat and looking a bit 2D. Um, when, when you put your covering on it, you want it to be undulating and, and a bit bumpy as such. The grey paint's dry, um, so now's time to um, secure the, uh, dry, uh, the stone wall. And I'm simply doing that by using uh, some uh, super glue just to beat around uh, the bottom there and pressing it onto the board. Uh, as you can see, I'm putting a good amount on because I want this to be really secure. So I just pressed it to the board and it was on. Now I'm, I'm taking some um, plastic trees. Now th these trees are, are very good. They are coming in many different shapes and, and sizes um, and, and various uh, packets. The good thing about them is, that, yeah, they are flat, but um, they're designed for you to pull and bend and twist the branches into whatever shape you want. So you can see me there, just um, pulling them, twisting them into uh, look, looking like a, a tree. But there's very various options you can do. Um, no tree should ever look the same, really. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're uh, bending them in position. Uh, you can, as I say, you can. Pull them, twist them, bend them, do whatever you want with them, really. So as you can see, I've, I've bent them into shape. Um, got one, one or two there. So now it's time to put the foliage on. And these are foliage clusters. And uh, they're, they're basically lumps of material. So I you also need some PVA glue for this. You can use super glue as well, of course, but it, it gets extremely messy. Um, so I would use um, a PVA glue where it's easier to wash off your hands. So, this, as I said, this comes in clumps and you can break it down as fine as you want. So, it depends on the builder, what they want the tree for uh, and so forth. So, you can have a, a fine foliage co cover or a thick. And all you do is put a little bit of PVA glue on uh, the branch, like so. Put as much on 
as you think is necessary. Remember, this dries clear uh, as well. I would advise only to do um, one throng of the brush at a time, and you simply just push on the um, foliage of the, the clump. Now, there's different colours and different types um, of this material that you can buy. Um, it depends on what you need it for, obviously, and what colour you, you wish to do. I should point out that I painted the trees in one one or natural wood by a humbrel. Um, I, I done this on off camera. Well, uh, I, I had pre-painted a, a few of them beforehand. That's why I hadn't uh, re recorded it. But they're, they're basically painted in a wood color. You can do this as rough as you like with adding little bits of different shade, a brown or silver. Again, depending on um, what um, kind of tree you want. Not silver, but a light grey. So I'm just carrying on uh, building this um, branch up, just adding little bits of the clusters um, as I go along. And again, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. Just do what feels natural to yourself while you're making these up. You, you soon get the handle of how you would like it to be done. So that's the first tree done. As you can see, it's starting to look like a, a, a tree now. So while I'm making up this tree, I've decided to add um, a little different element in the tree. Not to all of them, and it's only going to be quite small. And um, how I'm doing is just this. I'm using this light gin uh, that comes um, in, in these parts. It's the same people that make the um, clusters. And um, and it behaves the same way as the clusters. It's just um, a different um, colour. Um, and it's more stringier than, than the clumps. Now all I'm doing is mixing it in with the green cluster clumps and so small parts of the orange will be going onto the, the green. Now this part that I use this light chain is for autumn colours so I don't want it to be all autumn. Um, I'm only doing it just in just a tiny bit of colour um, to blend in with the next diorama that is going to go set against it. I may decide to change it again. Uh, it's more of an experiment really to see how it looks. So I'm just making it up like I did the other tree, but as you can see that tiny little bits of the orange are just getting incorporated into the actual makeup of the branch and foliage colour. So that's uh, the next tree done with the little bit of legend on it. I've added a tiny bit of legend green on it as well. Um, no, it was just a uh, still um, added on there uh, just to see whether it would work or not. I will cut it down to a more proper size. So I've made all the uh, trays for this particular part of the diorama. Um, I think the lichen, sort of orange things, uh, blend in with the branches quite well. So what I've got to do now is take a bit of a tissue taking the trees off the base and I'm just going to lay out the bases on the diorama so like that got my trees over there just waiting and I'm going to be cementing these in position now so we'll just get a base some PVA glue and then put it in roughly where I want them. Well, not roughly, that's where they're going to go. Also, don't worry if you don't get the exact placement you were after. It's meant to be fluid and natural. You know, nothing really should be in a straight line or whatever. Branches can't intermix with other branches or another tree. So don't worry if they're going to clash. So now we have to cover this area. Um, first of all, put on some PVA glue. So I'm putting some on around the base, not the actual stump of the um, tree. And then just spreading this play around so 
I'll just do a small here to show you what I do with the whole logo. It takes a bit of time. So now I'm covering it with the uh, grasses and earth tones. But what I have here is a series of coloured grasses. So for instance, this is yellow coarse grass. This is just a uh, normal grass. Uh, this is burnt grass and so on. And you can do this with a sieve or a shaker or you can just sprinkle it on like I'm doing here. So I'm just taking a bit of each. Now you don't want a complete blanket because it look a little bit unnatural. A bit much. I'm just using my finger. Press it in. So that's the main cover done. Now make sure of that. I've also added the yellow tough bits of grass just to give it a bit of contrast. That's still dry. So just the corner now. I was going to put a tree here, but I've decided not to. I wanted to follow the mock-up diorama I did. I just had it as a, a bit of grassland. So that's what I'm going to do. That's the thing, you want to know when to stop as, as well when you're doing this. And I'll take care of that. I'll just blend it in slightly. So now we've got to build up the ground a bit. In here is twigs and um, ground up twigs from last year that I from the garden. Um, if you make dioramas, it's always good to have things like this um, on hand ready. There's a good old earthy smell coming from it. And now, just taking some glue. Down the cocktail stick. Just add more glue. And I'm adding this where the trees are going to be thickest. So the idea is to continue to break up the, the landscape, add more depth and um, interesting areas. So just uh, sprinkling on the ground up twigs and, and debris onto it. Not all over so. And this starts giving definition to the floor. So it's not too uh, too deep. Gives it different levels, different textures. So if you haven't done this, all I did was um, take some twigs. This was in the autumn. And um, I put a load in my Nutribullet, which is a blender thing. And it's just blended them up so you get this coarse material. And then I'd kept some twigs, um, things like that, uh, to build up parts of dioramas and so forth. Put it in any type of container because it will have that earthy smell. So now to actually place in the trees, so just a little bit of cement inside the base of the trunk. And uh, take a tree. Now well, this is a very you want to make sure that you're happy with the placement. And then just cement them in. Remember at this point you can still move the branches in position into different um, positions I should say if you're not happy uh, with the exact location of them. But um, again it's all how you feel um, how it looks to you. Try and make it look natural for and the last one going in. So, as you can see, oh, that's it. Can you save view? Now, the clump and stuff that I use for the leaves, obviously. Come in different colours and that. 
and it's also good for simulating hedgerows, bushes and so forth. So it might take a little bit. Double glue on it. And just carry on putting it down the edge of the, the wall. Again, you can use as much or little as you feel necessary. Yeah, that'll do it. So here we are. This is it almost complete. And if you can see by the um, side saw the corner, the one that just came up, that's the basic uh, pattern that I wanted. I think I've achieved that. So, so all that's left is uh, to put my two trucks off. And um, that will be the first one complete. Well, that brings this uh, particular uh, section of the diorama to an end. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for the 176 series? And uh, you can see all the different tanks and trucks that I built for this diorama. Or indeed check out the um, uh, other content on the channel. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get... Uh, you get notified of the future updates and my builds. Hit that like button and of course uh, leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.